Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. Today we are going to paint something seasonal. We're going to do a bright fall landscape and it's going to be super simple. Optionally, really, this would be a good one if you like to paint with Q-tips. Get out some Q-tips. I'm not going to, but you could totally pull it off and it'll be awesome. So here's what you need. You need a pencil and some sort of paper, canvas, or whatever. You'll need an eraser. Um, I have paint brushes. I have paint. You don't need to use paint. I will suggest for this one though that you use a medium that's opaque and that can be layered just for the way I'm going to do it. A lot of them I do in a way that's simple to pull off in watercolor or whatever you're using, but this one I'm going from dark to light and you can't pull that off with watercolor. So acrylics are great. Um, if you want to try oils, go to. I'm using gouache because it doesn't cause a glare with my lights. Um, the colors I'm going to use today, I have white. I have a blue. This is ultramarine. Just use whatever blue you have. I have, this is a warm green. If you have a choice, I would go with a warm green. If you don't have a choice, use whatever green you have. Um, sap green is, green is warm, for example. Um, thalo green is cool. This one tends toward yellow. Thalo blue tends toward blue. Just use whatever you have. It's fun. I also have red. Um, and an orange and a yellow and a brown. You don't need these specific colors. These are just what I'm using. And uh, yeah, let's get going. This one is super ultra simple. I'm going to use a straight edge just to get um, a line across the bottom that's straight. You don't need to use a straight edge. You can use paper if you want to. You don't, it doesn't matter. So now this one just kind of came out of my head so I don't have like a photo reference or anything so we're just going to see how this one turns out. Just trying to make this pretty straight, just drawing really light lines. Make sure you can see that you can. It looks like my camera got crooked. There we go, that's better. Okay, so we have in the middle, excuse, in the middle we have this tree, right? And so it's a really simple tree. I'm going to start, oh, about the midpoint here, okay? And I'm just going to draw a line kind of in and then out like that. And this is an old tree, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing like that, right? But this guy, he has like a hole in him. And this just to make it more interesting. If you don't want to do that, don't. <laughs> it's fine. So I'm going to make like this lip over the top of it and a lip over the bottom of it just to give the, t the tree some texture. It probably, let's see, might come out like there. And then we'll have a hole of like that and around and up like that. Okay, I'm going to make that side not straight. And then there is our little hole in our tree. Just because. So this guy, he comes up and then there's another branch that comes off here here about and then we'll have this little V here. I'm just going to erase this for clarity. Now using um, acrylics or whatever you're using that's opaque, keep in mind that there are variations in these paint companies definitions of opaque like um, this gouache isn't especially opaque. Uh, your paint might might or might not be so what you want to do if you if your paint isn't very opaque You're going to want to be sure and erase things that you're not going to be painting terribly darkly over like this I'm not worried because that's going to be black pretty much So anyway, I will erase this little bit right there Just like that Okay now for the Behind the tree. I'll go ahead and do this part first Behind the tree, I'm, I'm just putting some hills just to add something so it's not just, you know, straight up sky. 
and it comes down, and this one comes down here, and then they kind of overlap, and this one goes up there. Oops. So we got our hills, right? I'm not going to do anything other than paint those kind of green. So, and then I'm putting over here, I'm going to put a little like bushy thing just to have something on the horizon other than the tree. Okay, and then this guy comes down here. And then I'm just going to make it kind of flat, but not terrifically flat. Thing. And then he curves around here, and I'm going to erase these excess lines. And the one in the middle. Okay. And for the bottom of the tree, I'm just going to show that roots are going into the ground by making a line that's not straight. There we go. Okay, there's the base of our tree. And then I'm going to have my leaves now. This line is completely not going to end up being terribly accurate. I just want to, I'm just kind of outlining where I want my stuff to go, where I want my leaves to go. Okay, so they'll come down, they'll come around here, we'll go almost to the top. Uh oh, you see what I did there? All this has to come down. So we have enough tree. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we use pencil. So this is just going to come up about here. The tree comes there. Okay. And I'm just going to erase all of this. If you want to add more trees in the back, go to. That's cool. I am going to add, I'm going to pretend that sun is up in this vicinity so I'm going to add a shadow and that's just going to come down here okay and then I'm going to go in I don't want it to be all the same so I'm going to add that going down there it's going to come up a little bit and I'm just kind of refining my sketch a little bit I'm going to erase that just so I'm clear on where I'm painting and erase that. Now don't be afraid to change your sketches because this is the this is the time to do it before you start committing to paint because you can't just erase paint like you can pencil marks. Okay. And I believe really that's it for the sketch. I do want this guy. I want to be up here. So Hmm. We're going to reconfigure the um, traceable will be a little bit different, but that is okay. I'm going to put my V over here, and this is just to have some kind of variation. And so this guy is actually going to come down like that. And that's really the only difference. I just want some sky peeking through there, and we're going to have sky peeking through the uh the leaves too the way we're going to do them we're not just going to like paint it we're going to do it in dots which is why i said that this would be a good time to pull out the q-tips that is not what i'm going to do okay so that's our sketch i told you it was super easy um i'm gonna get out my paint and we'll get to painting okay the first thing i do is going to be the most complicated we are going to make a gradient sky if you've never done this before don't worry about it and if you don't like the look of yours or mine um, you can uh, you can uh, just paint right back over it or else you can just skip it all together and paint the sky blue so here's how I'm gonna do it and make sure you can see what I'm doing now gouache behaves a lot like acrylics but really it dries even faster uh, if you want a good gradient for a sky you pretty much like a really good one you pretty much need to use oils but that is beyond the scope of what I am doing here today so, let's see, I don't need that much blue. So here's how I'm going to do this. Now, one, one difference is with gouache, I really could just kind of treat it like watercolor and 
put more water in it the farther I went down. But I'm going to treat it like acrylics. And I'm going to paint over everything. Like, I'll even go into the hill. So I'll just do this, all this flat, because I want some sky peeking through the leaves in this tree anyway. So I want the whole thing painted. I'm going to paint over my lines and not worry about it, because vast odds are I'm still going to be able to see those lines after I paint these. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to dampen my brush, get a paper towel, because essentially this specific wash is acrylic, just kind of like what you might be using. It just dries with a matte finish. So I'm going to get some blue, and the way we're going to do it is I want the top to be darker than the bottom, because if you look up at the sky, straight up, uh, it is darker than it is at the horizon. So that's how we're going to do it. So I'm going to get some blue. I certainly don't want it that dark, so I'm going to put a bunch of white in it. Now what you're going to get here will vary depending on what blue you have specifically and how opaque your paint is. And here's what I'm going to do, and this is going to just do it as fast as you can without like messing everything up, okay? So here's what I'm going to do, because gouache, gouache really, I think, dries even faster than acrylic. So I'm going to paint the top of this. I'm going to get some water in it. Don't want a ton of water. Just want some water. Okay. This is this weird paper that I don't like. So I've got that, right? I'm going to put more white in it. Get a little more water. Okay. I'm going to do that. And then I'm just going to kind of scrub up that white into the darker color. Add more white. Do the same thing pretty fast down my two uh, into my hills. I don't need to go all the way to the bottom. I do want it still to be um, pretty. I'm not good at painting and talking at the same time. Still want it to be pretty blue at the bottom, but not too blue. Okay, so I'll have that line there. Now, the big rule here is once it starts drying, you have to stop. You can do another pass again once it's dry, but once it starts drying, you really have to stop. Okay, I'm going to get some more. I'm just going to take this down to the bottom of my hills just because I want, I want a tent of blue in them anyway because they're in the distance. I'm not worried about this bush or the tree. Oops. Okay. More white. You see how I'm just kind of taking this fast? If you use oils, you can do this super duper slowly. And I am just letting this weird watercolor paper texture be what it is because it's just, it's just weird and a problem. Okay. So there's my sky done very hastily. You can see the gradient in it. Um, yeah, that's, this is why I generally don't like acrylics because I like on my own to paint a lot of uh, landscapes, but as long as they're small format, it's fine. But just trying to, just try to imagine painting something really big. Um, and it just kind of like drying on you before you can get all the paint off. And then you just start screaming at the canvas and it's just not a good situation. Okay. So, so we have our sky. Mine really is almost dry already because it is um, gouache and gouache is fast. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. Make sure that whatever you are painting with is dry before you start moving on. Okay, so next I'm going to do these hills that I can very vaguely see. I'm going to get some green. Okay, and I'm going to do these in green. I'm going to add a wee tiny bit of blue and a wee little bit of white because I want them to be different than the grass, which is pretty much going to be this green. Okay, so here's some green. Add a wee bit of blue because when you look in the distance, you end up uh, 
seeing uh, a, a bluing of the horizon or purpling. So just a wee little bit. You see that? But I don't want it darker than what the grass is going to be. So I'm adding some white. Add some more white. Get it too white and it's going to start looking misty, which really is fine. Okay. So this time I'm only going to paint the hills, which I can't really see. So I'm going to kind of guess where they were. I can see this one. <laughs> this one goes like this, like that and to the tree and then this goes down so I'm going to paint that and if I really have lost track on the other side all I'm going to do is just make up another hill like this is no big deal oh this is a nice sagey green isn't it and I'm also not terribly worried about getting into where the grass is because the grass is going to be a darker green than this. So I'm going to have to mix more of this. That's okay. One painting skill I have in no way come close, coming, come close to mastering is, uh, paint, is, is mixing enough paint to do anything. I'm really bad about that. Okay. There we go. There's there's one hill. Make some more of this that I didn't mix enough of until it looks vaguely the same. Vaguely. Okay, that's vaguely the same. The water gouache also takes more water than acrylic does. So this one went here, and I'm okay with overlapping the tree. That doesn't bother me because of the way we're going to do it. I'm going to guess that, oh yeah, and then this needs to come over here, just like that. Oh, that's not good. Okay. We're going to have to make our hill higher, and this like that, and that's good. One thing I don't want to do is paint into my sky because that will only cause frustration. Anywhere else is fine, but places that I actually want to be sky, I do not want to paint over. This bush eh, doesn't matter that much. So I'm just going to get this. I see I need more paint in that because I started stretching it too thin when I start, started uh, running out. So I'm going to give this another coat. If you're doing the same thing, be sure yours is dry. I also have a little heater going on in here because my house is freezing. And that is helping it dry fast too. Okay. So there are my hills. And then I'm going to paint the grass. And I think, no, that's such a dark green. I think what I'm going to do for the grass is I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow to it. I don't know. I don't want it too yellowy, but at the same time, I don't really want it darker. There's a kind of white called mixing white that you can use in a case like this. But I'm not going to. Okay. It's definitely richer. I want it, I want it darker, but I don't want it that dark. I don't want it that rich really either. Okay. That should do. So now I'm just going to go, that little bit isn't dry. You see how you can tell the difference? Yeah, that's all I'm going for. It does not look like I mixed enough, but that's okay. I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to paint the grass. Probably not going to be able to see the shadow line in a second, but that's okay. We'll just go back and paint it anyway. 
there is our grass. Now, I guess I don't really need to clean this off. The way I'm going to make that little shadow, and I'm going to go back over that. I'm not worried about where I cut into the tree because that's going to be a pretty dark color. So, here's how I'm going to do the um, shadow. I'm going to get some of the blue, I mean some of the green, and some of the blue. I'm going to darken the green. And that's going to be my shadow. So, I'm just going to do that. I was going to say it was vaguely here, not straight lines. And here. Like that. Eep. Nothing. And again, the tree, you'll be able to paint over it as long as you're using opaque paints or whatever. Some good colored pencils will work for this one too. Okay. So I guess this is a southern fall because the, uh, let's cover this little white bit, um, because the grass is still, the grass is still green, but the trees are turning. Okay, so there's our little shadow to show that the sun is out. Okay. Next up, I actually think I'm going to paint this guy that color, which means I need to mix more of it. Just green and blue, just like that. I mainly, I want it to show that it's in the foreground or in the midground, really. Um, and I want it to look different than the rest of, the, of uh, that and that. And again, depending on what medium you're using, you might need to check and make sure it's dry and just kind of give it like a... See, I'll paint straight across here, and then I'll go back. It doesn't want it, you don't want it to be straight or like a circle or something like that. You don't want it to be symmetrical. Put too much water in there. Let's see. I don't want the bottom to be exactly straight. Okay. So there's my little bush. Next up, I'm going to do the tree trunk, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get some brown. Sure, you can't see the top over there. There we go. And to get some brown, like that, and so really ready brown. I don't want my tree that color. So here's what I'm going to do about it. Get this one, I guess. Okay, I'm going to get brown. Like that and then I'm gonna gray it I'm not too worried about that green in there um I put some white in it and I'm gonna get some blue and I should have put the blue in before the white but that doesn't matter that much okay I want it I want it gray if you mix these two paint colors the brown and the blue straight you will get black and I don't want it black but I don't want it red brown either so I'm gonna add a good bit of blue to this and I don't want it too too dark so I'm gonna add white okay and then add a little more white I don't want it that dark I'm gonna get some more white in fact okay you see how I have desaturated it and made it more gray and I have lightened it. So I just didn't want it to be that red. Okay, so I've got this. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint the tree. If we do it fast enough, because I'll be wanting to go back and put some branches in there to show that the, that the tree continues up into the leaves. But, um, let's see, I'm going to cover all this up. But, uh, I want to do that after I put the leaves in. So we'll see how quickly this dries on palette paper. Now, if you painted into the lines that you drew, that you drew for the roots, this is the time to fix that. So I'll be doing, so 
there is my branch my tree I'm not concerned about painting up into where the leaves are gonna be I do want to find again where that little hole in the tree was I paint here and then there's the I barely see my pencil lines just like that and it doesn't matter if you paint into where the hole is because the hole is gonna be way darker And let's see, this came up like that, and down like that. Okay. So we are just going to get this chunk painted. We'll come back and add some details to it in a little bit. I just want the base painted. So I don't want this, see how I'm just making it like really kind of jagged? I don't want it to, you know, not look like a tree. Okay. So. And by now, if you watch Art Club, you know my opinion of this weird paper. Okay weird texture and I'm gonna paint this up a little bit farther I'm gonna paint over it so I'm not too worried okay that looks good for now so there's the beginning of my tree and now I'm gonna go I'm gonna get you might want to experiment with what kind of brush you use for this part um, I'm going to start with red. I'm going to do this in layers. So I want, I'm going to do red, orange, and then white. And that's going from dark to light, which is why it's kind of important that you're not using um, like watercolors where you would have to go light, light to dark. If you are, then start with the yellow and then slowly progress darker around it. It's just easier to do something like this with um, opaque paints. So... Here's how I'm going to do this. I don't want that super duper bright red. If you do, then go for it. Um, this is just a little bit too red for my taste. So I'm going to grab some of this blue, just a tiny bit. That's a really strong blue. You can grab some brown. But what I want really is that blue that's already drying. You see how it's just kind of turning it. You can also grab some green. Um, red and green are complements. They are opposites on the color wheel, and thus green will desaturate and darken it, just like the blue and the brown interact. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do this. I have my basic shape of the tree that I can kind of see if I look really hard, but uh, I'm going to go in and guess where my tree was going to be and start doing this. I'm just making little dots. I want to leave some room. It doesn't matter what kind of brush you're using for this. You can use really any kind. Um, use whatever kind works for the shape that you're going for. And I'm just going to kind of do the backbone of this. And this one I'm going to fill in more than I will the others. It's just you see I am leaving sky and this might take a little bit of paint. I think in the original, I think in the in the the um, sketch I did, it went under. I mean, it went over the hills some. So do that, and that's fine. Shows that tree. Oops, I just went through that. Oh well. So yeah, so I'm just gonna do a bunch of little kind of dots with this until I get the area that I want to cover pretty well filled in. Okay, and you're like, Lindsay, this is really ugly. And yes, right now it is. This is the <laughs> thing's ugly face. You see when I mix, I mix the darker, it, it doesn't matter. I went back with some that was more like that color. It's all good. now. 
Um, you might want to let yours dry. You might not care. I'm not going to care. If some mixes in, some mixes in. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get some orange. So this is just straight orange. I'm just going to go back over it. You see, now the main thing is you don't want it to be entirely symmetrical. So you see how I have like branches and leaves and stuff sticking out. Um, I want to be sure and keep that. So, and I'm not putting as much uh, orange as I did red. Because I definitely want the red to show through. This is just one little layer of the situation. So I want less orange. After this, we're going to go back with yellow. I want even less yellow. But this is adding some interesting variation to our leaves. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I'm happy enough with how it looks. Okay, that's going to be enough orange, I think. I can always go back and add more. Now I'm going to do the same thing with yellow. I'm not going to let it dry. You can let yours dry if you want to, but I don't mind it mixing up a little bit. I think it makes it more interesting. So, there's some yellow, some fresh, clean yellow. I'm just going to go in and do the same thing. It's just, you see I'm leaving some sky, and I am using less than I used of both the red and the orange. Now if you are having um, problems with your yellow being too transparent, which I am not, add a little bit of white to it and that will help with the opacity of it. So I'm just going to do this until I'm happy with the amount of yellow in there. Okay, starting to look a little bit more interesting. So there are the leaves on our tree, right? But those aren't enough leaves. It's fall and the grass is green, but the leaves have started to fall. So we're going to do some leaves on the ground. Okay. And so I'm going to go back and hopefully this is not dry completely. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do way less on the ground than I did on the tree. However, if you want to do more that then and even like cover the ground, go to, that's all cool. So I'm just going to make some dots around here to show that there are leaves that have fallen. I'm going to make a darker red to go in there, but so I'm going to skip that part. Don't be too precious with this. It's all good. Okay just showing there's some leaves on the ground. I'll go back and do the stuff in the shadows in a minute. So there's red. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get some orange. Just put a little bit in there. Okay. And then I'm going to get yellow. Looks like I need to get some more yellow. just a little bit of yellow in there and now we're gonna go back and add the stuff the the shadowy stuff so here's how I'm gonna do that I have let me get another paper towel I have this red right so I'm gonna get red I'm gonna add blue I'm gonna make it darker than it was before. I'll add a wee bit of brown to it. I want to make it darker than that red. You see how dark that is? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the same thing. And here, just add some shadowed leaves. Okay? With the orange across the color wheel from, from orange is blue. So I'm going to add some blue to the orange too. Just darken it and to gray it a little bit for a shadow that is way too much blue. There we go. Now we get a, a brown. And you see that just looks like it's in shadow. So I'm going to add some there. OK, 
Okay. And now I'm going to get yellow. All I'm going to do the yellow is I'm going to add some of the brown to the yellow and turn it in more into a, a yellow. Ah! Okay, that was way more brown than I needed. Okay, that's more like it. Mix that up. It's very orangey, but that is okay. You see how this is darker? So I'm going to add some of that, and there are our shadow leaves. Now, to make this painting look better, we're going to add some details. Details often make any painting look better. Okay. Pull up the sleeves a little bit. Have a, a sip of tea. Okay. And here's how we're going to do this. Let's start with the most obvious part. And I'm going to do that part. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to get some of that brown. Okay. It's brown. Make sure you can see it yet. And blue. I'm going to make it almost black. Ooh, nowhere near. A bunch more blue. There we go. See how dark that is? Just getting close. I don't want it black black, but I want it pretty close. That's good nice and dark so get mix brown and blue until you get something nice and dark and then go in and paint in this hole just like that okay and that's just the beginning what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add white to this like a good bit of white. You see how gray that is? Okay, I'm going to add some more brown because I want it I want it to tend back toward that reddy brown color. I want it darker than the tree. That's better. Wee bit more white. Come on, white. Don't dry. Okay. So here's what we're going to do with the tree. I have my little brush. Add some details to the tree. So this is kind of like knotty up in here. Now try not to get your hands all up in those leaves if they're still wet, like mine are, and like my hand, you know, tends to do. So I'm just gonna add like a ring here. I want to show there's texture on this tree. Okay, we're gonna go up in here and add some shadows where these uh, roots are. So, see all of this is going to make this painting look more interesting and thus better. Okay, we want to, let's see, one thing I forgot is I'm going to do that and then get some more white don't want it as light as the tree, but I want it lighter than those lines we're making. Mm. Ooh, way too much color. Let's add some more blue. Better. Okay, so here's one thing that I forgot to do. More white. Too much white. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to paint in... A shadow where these leaves are. Get a good bit of water on here. So I'm going to paint under these to show that there is a shadow and that the tree is not all just like one color because that would be weird. Okay, now I'm going to go back to this darker color. Let's see. I'm also, really, I'm going to extend this because say we're going to say that, you know, we're going down with the, um, the sun. I'm going to paint down here, this side. And make it kind of jagged because I don't want it to I don't want it to be completely straight because this tree has texture and that's what we're trying to show okay so there's that we'll say that's where 
shadow is. I'm going to bring this in here some. There we go. That's starting to look more tree-like. Okay, and now I'm going to go back with this first brown right here. Get some water. Again, gouache takes more water. It also dries faster. And I'm going to do some lines. Oh, that's interesting. Getting like this weird dual line out of this, and that's actually working. Okay, and just do some like not straight lines down this tree. You can do them of different lengths, and different thicknesses. Just to show that this is not just like boring tree. This is this is an interesting tree. Okay, just down, oops, down here. Okay, little bit more detail because the detail really for this painting. The details everything. Okay, so there's there's our tree. We can add, make it a little bit more interesting. We can get some more white. This and take this over here. And what we're gonna do that we want it lighter than the tree. You can add as many de or as few details as you want to this situation. But here's what I'm going to do. The sun is coming down. I want this side to be highlighted a little bit. Like that. Okay. I'll do that. And then on the right side of some of these, the bigger ones, I'm going to do a little line. And that's just going to show that there's texture on this guy. And see how this is just kind of making it more interesting, Main making the painting look better in general. Let's see. Okay. So I think I think I'm gonna be okay with that with that tree because we're not going for like a super complex painting or anything we want it to be a simple painting we just want it to be a little bit more interesting okay so now our tree is interesting right let's see we want our bush over here to be a little bit more interesting so what I'm going to do is my paint is drying because I also have a heater on down here that I should turn off okay so I'm going to get some more green. Now remember, this is green and blue. So I'm going to get some more green. And uh, my blue is okay. Just a little bit more green. Add. Let's see. Let's go over here. I want this darker than the bush itself first. Okay. So that's a little bit too dark. Add some green until you're happy with it. You just want it darker than this. Okay, and then I'm going to go in along the bottom. We're going to show shadows. And this emphasizes that this is not just like some plain boring bush. The bush itself is interesting. Okay, there's that. That's too blue. I need to add more green. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and then I'm going to add little undersides of things. Just to show, just, and this is the same thing that we did over here. Just to show that there's, there's something interesting going on over here too. It's not just a flat bush and that a lot of the time is the difference the the detail that you're adding a lot of the time is the difference between a painting that you can be happy with at the end and the a painting that you're just like ooh. so because that was totally like 
Ew, until I did that to that tree. And now the tree looks better. Another paper towel. Okay. So we've added darker and now we're going to add light. So we're going to get some white over here and then gradually mix some white. Ooh, that's too much. Mix it into some white and we'll get oh, more green. More green. Okay, and then we want a lighter color than that bush. We still want some blue in it because that's the color of the bush, but we want more white. That looks good. Okay, and then we go along the top. And now this is behind the tree, so it's not the true. That's not. That's too dark still. Um, the tree isn't shadowing it, so I want it to be. I want the so it's the sun's hitting it, so I want that to show. And I want it to be lighter than the hills so you can see it. Okay, let's see. And then along some of these, like that, on the top. So you'll so it'll just show that there's some stuff going on. Okay, much better. Add again as much or as little detail as you want. Okay, now we are almost done. So I'm going to leave these hills. If you want to add like some background trees to them or something, go to. I'm not going to do that, but I am going to add some texture to this grass because the grass is terribly boring. So I want, oh, really about the color of this will work. So I definitely don't want that light color. So I want the green, some blue mixed in. Okay, I'm going to start with that. can add some light too. Okay, but on places like this, like watch, I'm going to overlap the tree over here and just show that there's some grass growing. And let's see. There's some poking up from that. Some in it. Okay, and these are just all the little places where the sun is not hitting the grass. So I should have added a shadow over there, but oh well. Actually, I think I want to add a shadow over there. We're going to add a shadow over there because that's kind of ridiculous without it. So I'm going to add some more blue. Change brushes, get one that's a little bit bigger. Where it is, here it is, this brush. So I've got my dark blue green. Make some water. So I'm just gonna kinda go over this way. Hopefully this will dry a little bit lighter than it looks like it will. We'll see. Gouache has a weird, um, I think I'm going to have to add some white to that. Um, gouache has a weird color shift when it dries, so you never, well, I mean, you do after a while, but um, until you really get used to the colors you're using, you, it's just, it's, it's always an adventure to see what colors, how gouache is going to dry. Usually dark colors dry lighter and light colors dry darker, but other times that's not quite what happens. And I think that's going to be too dark. So the way we fix that is we get some more green. And first, I think we're going to let that dry and see what color it actually does dry. So, because I want it closer to that color. So we're going to see what color that dries and then we'll mess with it. In the meantime, I'm going to go back. I'm going to get some green right here. Brush has almost had it. Okay, get some green. 
some white, there's some brown in there, but that's okay. I want a good bit more green than that. I want this to be lighter than the um, grass, but I don't really see that yellow. Oh, here's some yellow that has them. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow in it, but I don't want it, I want it just mainly to be lighter. I don't want it to be yellower. So I've got this, make sure you can see that. I'm just gonna go in and add little, little bits. Ooh, it's almost exactly the same color. So I'm gonna lighten that with some white. Okay. Where even was that? That was over here. So this should dry. So all I'm gonna do is add little bits to show little clumps of grass. Okay, and this should be drying. The only rule is um, you want your grass, you can put some in the leaves too, you want your grass to be lighter and it needs to get smaller as it goes into the distance. So once it goes into the distance, so once So once it goes into the distance, um, it's just going to be little, little specks here and there just to show that there's something going on and that it's not just nothing. So we don't want a completely flat texture because that's boring. We don't want it to be boring. We want it to be interesting. So add as much or as little little grass textures as you want. Okay, so this did indeed turn darker than I want it to be. So I'm going to use a lighter color. I'm going to get this brush again. I'm going to get, let's see, I want green. And a wee, 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 touch of blue, but not, I don't want much. I want this to be mainly green, and then we might go back again and see, see where we are. Okay, now this is what closed it or where we want it. It's closer to that color. So what I'm going to do about this is I'm going to add some little bits of grass to it too, just so it too is more interesting. This hasn't quite dried all the way yet, so I'm going to get some of this paint. I'm just going to do this number and add long color and add some little grass interest to this. And then, let's see, I just don't want it symmetrical. Okay, so, and then to add interest to that, I'm going to go back one more time with my lighter color grass and I'm going to show it overlapping the dark part as in starts in the sun and then it overlaps into this shady part but just like the little bits of it yeah okay really is that it um, you can add more texture if you want to the hills. Um, I don't think I'm going to because that'll just complicate things. I think I'm done. Unless we can do this. This is one more little thing we're going to do to add some interest. We're going to go back. We're get, going to get some brown. I'll be able to see this. Brown. Wee bit of the blue, which I am running out of as it dries. And some white. I want to make a color that is similar as I can get to that without having to pull out more paint. It's pretty close. Okay, I'm going to come in here and just little bits. This is completely optional. I'm going to come in here and show that this tree is behind here by painting in where I think A, the tree might be and B, where some branches might be. So it can say, 
branch might come down through here, but we only see little, little peaks of them. Like that. Ooh, there might be a branch coming down through here. And over here. You see, it's just little bits just to show that, hey, this isn't just a bunch of leaves attached to nothing. This is stuff is attached to a tree. And toward the bottom, can make them thicker. Again, don't worry about this. This is just we're adding more interest to it. Little peaks of tree limbs. It doesn't all have to be over sky bits. It can be over the leaves because some of the leaves are going to be going behind the tree bits. Okay, and you want to leave that kind of subtle. I don't want too much of it. But down here, we want more tree than sky because the tree itself is going to extend higher up. Okay, so that looks like the tree is poking through the leaves. I hope you can see that a little bit. If you want to be super detailed, you can go back in. Um, I guess we can do a little bit of it, but we're not going to do too much. Uh, is this completely dry? Of course it is. I'm going to get some yellow, some brown, and just show. Let's see, more yellow than that. A little more brown. Yeesh. I'll just use that little bit. Okay. So you can go in, you can show that the yellow is darker down here where the shadow is. This is completely, completely optional. And you can do this with all the colors if you want to. It just depends. It's how much detail you want to add to this thing. I'm about done. But this part... This part is kind of shadowy, so you might want it darker. That's up to you. Get green in that? No. Okay. So that's all I'm going to do to this tree. I think he's a nice tree. If you want to add a sun in the background, you can do that. You can add whatever you want. You can continue adding details as much as you want, but I'm done. So I'm going to sign my name. I'm going to get, let's see, this is still wet. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add some white. To this so it stands out some more and with this little bit of sagey light green will hopefully stand out enough there we go that should be fun I'm gonna sign my name down here don't forget to sign your painting it's awesome because you made it okay painting signed and I think this is kind of cute. It's a super simple painting that you can make as difficult as you want it to be. Um, we kept this one super simple. It's a nice, happy fall scene. And I love fall. Fall makes me happy. And I love the good weather we're having this week. And it's so nice outside and so beautiful. And this just kind of will remind me of a beautiful fall day once we finally hit the depths of winter, which, you know, it's the south. It could be tomorrow. <laughs> I think this looks neat. It's super colorful. It was a super easy painting to do. I hope you learned some things about shading and lighting things to add more texture to things and just adding detail, but knowing when to stop. That's one thing is you just, you don't want to add too much because then it just kind of becomes overload. And then you, your painting starts looking like it's in its ugly phase again. Like, I'm glad I stopped with the darker yellow where I did. Anyway, this was super fun. I hope you had a good time. I hope you have an excellent fall. 
And uh, if you painted along with me or colored along with me or whatever you did, please take a picture of it and send it into, into the library social media. We love to see what you do. And join me next week where we will paint something else that's November themed. Uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Bye.